Hello and welcome back to Let's Play You Don't Know Jack. My name is WWD Deadman, but you already know that. Wow. Wow. Ted's dropped dead gorgeous body bags. That's a good episode to start on. Hi there, I'm Donnie. So, how many players will be employing our little game? Just me. Alone. Exciting. Type in your nomenclature, won't you? Yeah, I won't. Really? You have no name? How on Portugal? Let's see. Let's call you Playa. Because you are such a Playa, Playa. All right, now here's what you're going to do. You'll see a whole slaw of questions, and when you obfuscate the correct answer, press the button next to it. There will be a timer counting down, so the more harried your actions, the more money you'll get. <laughs> or drop. Okay, guys, let's get ready. Ten seconds. Happy trials. Uh, blue collar check. Six. Five. That's good, Black. Three. In order for some rides to work, you must consciously think that you are riding them. What? Hi, I'm Cookie Masterson, or as I'm known to my many lovers, I'm so embarrassed. What's your name again? Flying solo, so did Amelia Earhart. And look how that turned out. <laughs> and today's wrong answer of the game is being brought to you by Ted's Drop Dead Gorgeous Body Bags for that longer lasting last impression. Find the wrong answer associated with our sponsor to get yourself some sweet prizes and bonus cash. <laughs> and right this way. To begin with, Beauty Secrets of the Stars. How might Jessica Simpson explain to Jupiter how proactive acne solution could help remove its giant red spot? I can get the earthquake off your face in three days. Use this herbal mask and kiss that volcano goodbye. Rub on this cooling cream, your cheeks are on fire. Or this medicated pad will wipe away that massive storm. <laughs> Jupiter's famous red spot is in fact a three-century-old storm system, twice the size of our planet Earth. Yep. It would have gone away a century ago, but Jupiter just kept picking at it. <laughs> Here's a good one. Lick my <coughs> bootylicious. What would have happened had Destiny's child practiced Manifest Destiny? They would have assimilated all other girl groups, they would have expanded their tours westward, they would have given all their profits to their fans, or they would have never split up. I have no idea. Not much time. But that means Beyonce would never have had a solo career. And then Kanye West wouldn't have been able to make a fool of himself. Well, maybe not. Ah! Want to see the answer? Manifest Destiny refers to the early American idea that the U.S. must inevitably expand its boundaries westward to the Pacific. We uh -huh. now know that Manifest Destiny was really an excuse for John Quincy Adams to dress up in sparkly gold dresses. Here's one for you. Yo. The early bird gets on my nerves. That was a bird, all right. All these birds outside are giving me such a headache. I wish they'd shut up. Shut up, stupid birds! <whistles> well, at least I can find solace in my favorite snack, fortune cookies. Oh my god. Okay, let's see what this one says. Sometimes silence says a lot. <clears throat> yeah, how fitting. Assuming silence does say a lot, which one of these annoying birds is saying a whole lot? A tormenting toucan? A pesky peacock? A sassy stork? Or an offensive ostrich? Oh, uh, I haven't heard storks speak. Storks are virtually voiceless, leading them to say the most with their silence. I suppose storks don't really have a lot to say, since they're so busy flying, delivering babies, and appearing on jars of elastic pickles. This one's known as... There's more? This game is dragon. 
here. The movie How to Train Your Dragon gave instructions to train a dragon in the way Pavlov trained his dog. What would happen if you were training your dragon and the doorbell rang? The dragon would roar, the dragon would sleep, the dragon would drool, or the dragon would hump your leg. Pavlov's dog would drool when a bell was rung because it was conditioned to expect food. Whenever I see the DreamWorks logo appear in the opening credits, I've been conditioned to wish I was watching a Pixar movie. Where's the bow, girl? Rock my world, girl. Ooh, yeah. Take a stab at my stump hurts, and it's a dis or dat. I'm gonna read off seven names, and for each one, tell me if it's a type of tree or a medical condition. If it's a tree, press one. Okay. If it's a medical condition, press the number two. Each one right gets you 300 acorns. Each one wrong gets you 300 foot corns. And don't forget to watch the clock. Ready? Let's go. Bladder nut. Buckeye. Saddleback. Black gum. Clubfoot. Shadbush. Old man's beard. <laughs> wow, you really know your way around a shad bush. <laughs> Old man's beard. What kind of medical condition would that I be? I had an annoying French girlfriend who reminded me of a tree. The tree I'm referring to specifically is, of course, the weeping European beech. That's the end of round one. Uh. And you've got a decent score there. Don't screw it up. Don't forget, all the questions in round two are worth double. And lest you forget, the wrong answer of the game is still there for the taking. Okay then, here we go. Take a good look at... I got my target on Tarche. Suppose I lose my mind and start shooting arrows at the logo of a Target department store. If I wanted okay. to honor the Olympic archery rules, what parking section should I be in? Section A, 40 meters away. Section B, 55 meters away. Section C, 70 meters away. Or Section D, 85 meters away. I have no idea. Where is our right answer? I knew I put it here somewhere. <laughs> Want to see the right answer? The regulation distance for Olympic archery is 70 meters from the target. And when I'm done at target, I'm gonna use my BB gun to shoot the star out of the Walmart sign. I could win a unicorn mirror. Question seven. Let's try Patty's Pub Quiz. Which potential spin-off of the TV show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia would have the most technically correct title, Sunniness-wise? It's Always Sunny in Yuma, Arizona. It's Always Sunny in Roswell, New Mexico. It's Always Sunny in Fort Worth, Texas. Or It's Always Sunny in Boulder, Colorado. Uh... You show no signs of intelligent life. <laughs> correct answer, no fucking show clue. yourself. Yuma, Arizona. Arizona is the sunniest place in the United States, with the sun shining 90% of all possible daylight hours. Sounds awesome. Fuck I if I know. see any television show where Danny DeVito was even sweatier than usual. Walking chickens picking out a mate. Guess I'll marry eight. Next up, I don't. If TV's The Bachelor surprised his one true love with a trip to the wedding invitation store, which of the following acronyms might the couple come across? WTF, STD, SOL, or DOA? I have no fucking clue, but DOA is dead on arrival. It was begging to be picked. Save the dates. The first wedding invitations that are sent out are somehow commonly... Uh... I associate something else with that. Referred to as STDs. <laughs> I can't tell you how many STDs I've acquired over the years. Oh well, maybe someday I'll be the one giving the STDs. <laughs> oh, this answer is dead on arrival. <laughs> Just like the... Designer body bag, you've just won <laughs> Ted's drop dead gorgeous body bag. What the it fuck? Form follows function, but fashion follows you to the grave. Today's wrong answer uh. of the game is accompanied by an $8,000 cash bonus. Have at it. 
Open wide for... Has anyone seen my pants? If the sisterhood of the traveling pants actress Amber Tamblin were actually made out of amber, what would be true of her movies? They'd really resonate with audiences, they'd be exceptionally sappy, they'd all rate as four tar films, or they'd be sweet as honey. Uh, resin? Amber is fossilized tree resin. Resin yeah. is stuff that trees excrete to protect against insects and such, but it's not sap, which is more like tree blood. You know, I'm actually wearing a pair of traveling pants right now. Yes, they're currently traveling up my ass crack. Can we get on with this? Hold me, never let me go. How about step up to the streets? Which Stairmaster setting would give you the longest workout? Crown of the Statue of Liberty climb, top of the Eiffel Tower climb, Golden Gallery of St. Paul's Cathedral climb, or the Spanish Steps climb? Um, Eiffel Tower? Give me your tired, your poor, your stupid, your dim-witted, your Why did I press one? Dumb -dumbs. And we'll take you to you, idiot. Ah! Oh, honestly. It's over 1,600 steps to the top of the Eiffel Tower. I would have gotten that right if I was capable of pressing the correct button. So that would be more than three times the workout provided by any of these other choices. And when you get to the top, you can enjoy... Thanks, the St. Paul's Cathedral was enough for me. ...soft cheeses, and a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> Ah, you already know the rules. Off you go. Trapped like a rat. I'd rather be anywhere but here. Good luck. Who? You what? I haven't got the slightest. Bowser's Castle. The Lamb. What? For the rest of these, I have absolutely not the slightest idea what they even are. Except for R. Kelly, for who I don't, just don't know what they are referring to. Like, the only thing I know about R. Kelly is he sang, I believe I can fly. That's the game! Okay, the producers have been on my case about how I should congratulate the players that did so well. So I guess because my producers are on my back about this, I am happy to say you just missed the cutoff of being congratulated. Suck it, nerd! You don't know Jack! <laughs> <laughs> this one, folks. Okay, Danny, let us know what we're doing. Just give me the single if you want to proceed with continuation. Ugh, I hate these braces. My stupid mom made me get them. Yeah, braces suck. Braces and mom suck. Ooh, Tyler just texted me. Tyler's a douche. This exchange has been brought to you by the Council for Overheard Tween Conversations. Morning, Ted. Okay. <laughs> okay.
Whatever. I'll see you in the next episode. Till then, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more. And until next time, I'm Bobby Dadman.